Hey, it's Errol, and this is Vocal Defrag. Right now, before we hit the path, because we do what's called a transition walk, we walk through the forest and we listen to the atmosphere of now, and we receive from that as well as share it with anybody who's willing to travel beside us. But before we go out, there's I've always taken notes. That's just who I am, because I have a defrag journal. You ask the questions, you question the answers. And and one of the things that I wrote in the defrag journal today was based on that, that I don't own the fuel to create the fire. How many times have you been in a position like that? You don't own the fuel to create the fire, nor do you have the wood to keep that fire alive. That's a big picture because a lot of people, as you grow in age and in in strength as well as knowledge, they won't go back to who they once were, yet they yearn for that moment. What would it be like if I had continued or if they would have just believed in me a little bit more? And so the answer sometimes comes to us that you don't own the fuel to create the fire, nor do you have the wood to keep that fire alive. In my defrag journal, I asked the question, the little stuff is stuff that you forget. And I came back with words of argument, and I said, no, I set everything aside. I can't forget if it's sitting in front of me. I get so disappointed with myself when I can't find the follow-through. When do you get disappointed with yourself? Is it because you personally can't locate the follow-through? This is Vocal Defrag. We're going to hit the path here in a couple of seconds. I would love for you to walk with us, okay? It's Jazzy and I in this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll be right back. Okay, we're out on the path. It's a beautiful spring morning in Carolina. Uh, Words that come to me. It was like, where along the path of 29 years of daily writing did I start to see strength in things that I put on paper? First of all, I don't think I'm a brilliant writer because none of my books really sell. I just do it because it's like I'm told to do it. You know, you're moving through. Moving through the anxiety. Moving through the fear. The shame. The dreams. You know, I can do this. I'm going to move through it. We're going to see it happen. But it was when I was putting together my first book, One Man's Thousand Twenty One Thoughts. It was really supposed to be a book of poetry poetry because I challenged myself to write a thousand pieces of poetry in a thousand days but when I was going back through the daily writing what I felt in my heart wasn't the poetry but it was rather the words and the messages of a creative mind that was asking questions and then questioning answers and so I had to learn how to grow with that and and when I when I invite you to take up writing It's not because I want you to instantly find your forgiveness, your compassion, your belief in the things that you want to do. Because writing is like meditation. It's going to take years to trust it, to grow with it. So when words fall out of the writing instrument, trust me, they're not coming from me. They're coming from the writing instrument. I'm just there. I just happen to be lucky enough to say, all right, I'm going to write this. And the words come out that I don't own the fuel to create the fire, nor do I have the wood to keep that fire alive. That's supposed to reach somebody. As much as it empowered me in that moment of writing, I felt like that this is the subject that we need to do, that we are always consistently moving in the direction of other people's fuel, the fuel they need to start the fire so their business or their personal life can have success and you're used as that wood to keep that fire alive but what happens with the wood when the storms come in your mental storms your daily questions your daily doubts all of a sudden that fire begins to calm and the reason why is because there's not enough fuel to put a fire on that wood if it's been raining and that wood is now damp Going through the motions of understanding who you are is every reason why I started a defrag journal. Defragging is questioning and then questioning the answers. Allowing things, little thoughts that maybe someone in my life would say, you, you want fuel, fire, wood? What? That's, that's kind of stupid. Why, why would you even talk about something like that? And my answer always is, why not? Why not? What, what if? 
what if? And because the thing is, is I'm not ever going to get it back. Because I was writing in that moment, and I did put those words on paper. Trust me, out here in this gorgeous forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina, do you really think if I hadn't written it down that we would be talking about it right now? I guarantee inside my soul that it wouldn't be the subject that we're talking right now if I had not written it down. And it makes me wonder, what are you needing to do? to write things down. It's just a sheet of paper. It's just a pencil. It's just a pen. Yeah, but this is what I always get in return from writers. Well, yeah, but I, I'm really afraid of what other people are going to say. Yeah, you got to get over that too. Because as a creative mind, you have to understand, none of this is for you. That was a huge bullet to bite when I was putting paint on a canvas. I had all of these beautiful paintings in my art room. And it was adding up, and it was adding up. I was running out of room to even stand inside the art room. What was I going to do? And then someone said, put it in a gallery, sell it. Being the unprofessional that I was, and probably still am, I knew nothing about that. But then, the people came around me. It was almost like the universe was saying, you release that art, I will put leaders on your path. And it will happen. And it did. But I often wonder when I stare at these paintings, the few that I have left, because I've sold all of them, I wonder, what would have happened if I had not listened to that calling to put paint on a canvas? The same is true about daily writing. Getting control and the ownership of the fuel that starts the fire. And then, admitting to yourself and to others, I am the wood that will keep that fire alive. I am the wood that will not become damp because of my days of doubt. It will not become damp during my days of fear. I am the wood and I own the fuel. But, okay, hold on a second here, dude. You, you, you said something about moving through something uh, before you went out on the path. I did. I did. I'm the type of person, I, I do not like it if I forget something. If I have projects to do, I physically put those projects in front of me in my living room and my writing space. And the reason why is because it serves as a reminder of this is what you've got to do. So it's not that I am lazy or I am forgetful. In my methods of madness of setting things aside, putting it over here, putting it over there, my most difficult moments are locating that ability and that mindset to move through my excuses of not wanting to do what's right there in front of me. Now I'm going to turn it on you, on Defrag. I'm going to question you and I'm going to question your answers. How many things in your own personal life have you always wanted to do? Or maybe you've got to do this around the house. Maybe this in the backyard. Listen, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be very transparent. In 1997, when we planted 1,700 trees in this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina, do you know the real reason why I planted those trees? Y you can't turn on me, okay? The real reason is because I got tired of mowing my lawn. I was like, well, if I turn this into a forest and we make this natural, I don't have to mow the lawn anymore. I mean, my, my land is built out over hills to get out there to mow the lawn. That was not one day. That was several days of work. And what about all those huge rocks that are out there? How do I get rid of that? So I went from a Home Depot, Lowe's, Picture Magazine yard to one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, a forest. But I wish I would have done it in the way of saying, hey, replenishing the land that man destroyed by putting all these houses here. I can kind of say that, but when I do, I'm not sharing the truth. What are the things that are standing in the way of you that could be great for someone else? Remember, it's moving through you. We're all artists. It's got to move through you in order to have a larger than life event beyond you. You're just here for a moment. But you know what? The things that you create last well beyond the next two or three generations. 
I would love to talk to the future reader and or writer that will walk through this forest and they feel the same thing that I did in 1992. That it was like, oh no, you got to be kidding me. I, I, I got to write? That's what I heard while sitting in this forest. It was tiny at that time. It really was. It was tiny. It was this beautiful lawn with, with some natural trees, Carolina trees, and, and even the gumball trees and, and things like that that people really kind of, you know, ripped down. You know, the ugly trees. And, and there was like a little swarm of trees over here that, you know, people would have just chopped down right away because it wasn't perfect like a Lowe's magazine cover. But when we went in there with honest to God, North Carolina pines and elms, and we designed this forest... It was done so in a way of loving the land, not only in that day, in 1997, that day hell, that, to plant 1,700 trees took me almost a month and a half, my God, and those packages kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. But today, we're here in this beautiful forest as the spring sunshine is on us. I'm overlooking this gorgeous lake. You can hear the hawk in the distance. I've seen the deer this morning. It's beautiful. They didn't have a place to run to because man had ripped the land. So we're going to go back to the original thought. And that is, who owns the fuel that starts the fire? Who has the physical and mental shaping of creating the wood that keeps that fire alive? I believe deep inside my soul that my defrag writing started in November of 2017 because I knew in my heart that I was no longer the owner of the fuel to start the fire. I knew in my heart that the people that I was working with, they made me the wood. What they didn't see was how I became damp, tattered and torn by termites. I was breaking down. I was not the type of wood that was going to keep them in a strong, strong form of energy. Because this forest has been a part of my life since 1997, I've seen a lot of trees come down. I don't remove the stumps or the limbs. Those limbs were there to feed the soil so that future trees could have enough nutrients to grow. The forest floor is as natural as it can be because I know what's required in order to reach not this generation, but several more in front of us. Who owns the fuel that starts your fire? How do you become the wood to keep your fire burning? It's a tough question. And when you get an answer, question that answer. And after coming up with another question and another question, what is your follow through? What is that place that you know that the door is there, but you can no longer ignore it? You're going to have to take a leap of faith. You're going to have to reach out there and do something that so many other people will probably look at you and say, you got to be kidding me. That was a stupid bird brain idea. Yeah, but you know what? You did it. And the reason why you did it is because it's preparing you for something even greater. With that experience, you become stronger. With the idea of owning your wood and owning the fuel that becomes the fire, you have the strength to create the follow through. I'm presently going up Heartbreak Hill. We've talked about this many times on Vocal Defrag. It's a huge hill. Many, many, many bicyclists, walkers, joggers, and even skateboarders come here to Heartbreak Hill. So to climb this hill, it strengthens my heart. It's my moving through a difficult thing. It's making sure that my heart rate is up to feed the blood into my mind, body, and soul. The blood that will be required to become my fuel. Because we are the wood. And we own it. We now have the follow-through. Focal defrag. I challenge you to do it. Ask the questions. Grow a pair. Ask the real questions. Not how are you. Not, hey, are we going to make it? Don't give a damn. Your body doesn't give a damn about that. It wants real questions. And then, question the answers. Be the fuel. Be the wood. Be the follow-through. 
I'm Errol, and that's Vocal Defrag.